Okay, so if you're like me and you've got your Canon camera and you wanted to get the most out of video mode, you just popped it over into C-Log and never really thought twice about it. That's, that's kind of what I did. I'm like, great, I've got C-Log. I've got more range, I've got more flexibility in post-production. But what, what more can I want? And the other day I was sitting around just didn't really have anything to do, so I figured I'd pull out my camera and just kind of test out some of these settings to see if I can get just a little bit more out of this camera, a little bit better image quality. So I sat down and went through all this painstaking test so you don't have to. And now I've got my quality going from this to this. So if you notice, there's just a little subtle difference there. The colors pop off the screen just a little bit better. I think the skin tones are just a little bit nicer. They're a little bit warmer. And overall, it's just, it's a little bit more representative of what you're gonna see with your actual eye. So if you're just here for the settings, I'm gonna drop that right here, right here. So I've swapped over to color profile neutral. I've added three points of sharpness and I've kind of left everything else alone. I uh, left that at Rec 709 or BT.709, that's what it is in the Canon camera. And that's what I found to be kind of the best overall range uh, for what I do anyway. It may not be the absolute perfect settings for you, but it's the best for me. So that's the settings I'm using. If you wanna bail right now, just bounce, be like, cool, I got your settings, I'm out of here. Bye, see you later. If you wanna stick around and figure out how I got to this, well, let's dive right into that. So before you ask, all of these samples were shot on the Canon R5. They were shot in 4K HQ in IPB. I don't know that that's gonna make any difference, but that's what all these tests were shot on. I did do a side-by-side -side on my EOS R in studio. Just ever so slight difference, uh, still pretty close. Uh, maybe just dialed back on the contrast ever so slightly. But that's the baseline settings on my camera for this test. So I plopped my camera on a tripod, plopped myself in a chair, and just ran through a bunch of settings. Where I started with this, I uh, just started with the EOS original, uh, all settings set to zero, and then I flopped over to neutral 709, all settings at zero, and then neutral uh, 2020, all settings at zero. The big difference I noticed here is after I switched out of EOS original mode, uh, the shadows had a lot less blue in them, which is one of the very few things I did not like about shooting C-Log on this camera was when I did uh, wide landscapes, especially when there's a lot of shadows, uh, the shadows were just blue and it wasn't very appealing. Not, not the worst thing in the world, but I wasn't a huge fan of it. So it's nice to know that if I switch over to neutral, I can lose those blue shadows. Now you may be asking, what's the difference in the color space 709 and 2020? So it's a very, very technical explanation that I don't fully or at all understand myself. Uh, but the simple answer is, if you look in the Canon manual, it says 2020 is used for HDMI output, 709, use that for internal recording. That's the simplest explanation I can give you on that. I don't know, maybe I'll do another video about that in the future. Who knows? So moving on from there, I just tested out different sharpnesses, different hue levels, different saturation levels, different combinations of each. Brought that all back into the studio, took a look at it, and just kind of narrowed it down from there. I uh, did some more tests in studio with more selective settings and really kind of dialed in on the settings that I'm using now, which is the neutral uh, sharpness at three, everything else at zero, uh, Rec 709 on that color space. So what I've learned in this process, um, that the R5 I thought was, it's a little soft, which I actually don't mind it. It's, it's just got like this nice softness to it. But then on the sharpness test, uh, the comparisons I noticed, like once I pump that sharpness all the way up, I keep wanting to call it saturation. Sharpness, saturation. Sharpness is not saturation. Once I part, punch, 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 I don't. Once I punch that sharpness all the way up, it tended to look more like an action camera, uh, drone footage, something that's just a little overly sharp, uh, a little bit too sharp for what you really kind of want. It made it look like more lower end camera. So I dialed that back a little bit. I think between zero and three, depending on what you're shooting, is gonna be the best place to get the crispness without looking overly sharp. Does that make sense? I really hope it does. So if you're filming somebody and you're looking to get a little bit more detail in their face, you're gonna wanna maybe punch that sharpness up to about three. So if you want that face to look just a little bit softer, uh, go ahead and keep that softness, sharpness, sharpness 
uh, down to zero, maybe one, just to get a little bit of detail there. Um, but, but that's a pretty good range for that. Moving on to the saturation, that's something that can be easily dialed up or down in post-production. I was easily able to match the different saturation levels just by using a saturation slider in Premiere Pro. So I didn't really feel any point in bumping up or down the saturation on any of these tests. So I'm just gonna leave that flat zero, leave it there. No need to mess with that. And then with the hue tests, I found it to be very, very subtle differences. I tend not to mess with the hue on anything I do because I feel like every time I touch it, it just like goes way out of whack for me. I'm not the best at color grading or color correcting, but you know, it's just when it starts looking funny, I just stop messing with the sliders. And the hue slider is one that I found. It's just, every time I touch it, it's just, mm, nope. So I'm gonna go with the same thing in this camera. Uh, the one thing that did bug me a little bit is you can move your hue up and down, but it doesn't really tell you what that is doing. So it's actually doing this, um, which is from the Canon manual. You definitely do notice the shift in color here with the color card when you're going back and forth. It just shifts the whole color range off to one side or another. But that's also something you can do in post-production. One thing I do notice and deal with a lot with the Canon color science is most of the colors are pretty spot on, maybe a hair off, but the reds are always kind of like way off. So I always have to go in and post-production and dial that red into the red zone. It always looks kind of orange to me. So the way I deal with that, pretty simple. Open up your Lumetri color tab, go under your curves, open up hue versus hue. If you have a color card, this makes this a lot easier. Uh, just select that eyedropper, select that red on the color card, and just move that dot until over here on this scope, that dot points up towards red. And that just brings your reds back right where they need to be. So the hue on this, again, leaving it at zero, you can easily take a color card and kind of dial your colors a little bit one way or another, depending on which way you want to go. So not much you're going to gain from adding or subtracting hue unless you always are like, you know, everything's green or everything is always red. Maybe you can, you can mess with that just a little bit. But for me, I'm going to leave that one at zero and just call it good there. That's, that's where I'm at. So down below in the description, I have available some downloads for some LUTs, uh, two that I use, one's for indoor studio. This, this is the LUT I use on this shot. And one is for use uh, when I shoot outside. It just kind of drop that on and it gets me really, really close with my colors, my contrast, everything like that. So go ahead and feel free to download that. I hope that helps you out. If this whole video helps you out or this settings helps you out. Do me a huge favor. Hit that thumbs up button down there if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna see some more. And I will see you guys next time. But until then, in case you are curious about all the examples that I shot for this video, well, I'm just gonna let them roll, so uh, enjoy.
Thank you.